morning, Barrow 200. What's up? Um, we're just past Memorial Day and um, doing some packing back here. So I apologize for that mess, but it's all good because we're human. And uh, yeah, so we have to marshal on. We have to continue on with this this very compressed version of Joe 200. And I can see right here, I was checking out the discussions. You guys are already in there raging and that's wonderful. Um, so um, this series of aging, a discussion piggybacks on uh, what is happening in terms of the readings and quizzes this week as well. And um, and th this is a, a pretty personal uh, concept here. We're looking at reproduction and aging. There's a focus on uh, female reproduction, but do understand that uh, the male reproductive system undergoes significant aging in, in many of the problems in terms of fertility, um, in terms of miscarriages, and birth defects are associated with damage to the sperm because you are now an old dude. Okay, alrighty. Um, so uh, we have uh, a little bit to cover today because um, uh, we have some things coming up. And I'm going to go back to my favorite part that you should do every time. So you go to the announcements. Okay, and um, we've had some messages sent your way. Okay, um, my my wife commented to you about. Um, um, quizzes and not to worry and hey how about this little bonus you're gonna drop the lowest grade how cool is that she's a lot more compassionate than I am okay um, now do come down and check this every single day it's in the syllabus we just copied this out of the syllabus okay so we are right here we are in the um, theories of aging and cancer section okay um, next week starting June 4th okay um, we'll uh, be doing diabetes um, and heart disease, okay? Um, when we look around here, we recommend you get these quizzes done then, okay? These discussions, okay, um, uh, are due, okay? All right, um, we see uh, week two discussions, okay? Um, there's two of them, are due by June, June 4th. And then also notice the CT assignment is due by June 4th. Um, these are deadlines, okay? You're going to learn as you uh, become adults that we all live by deadlines. And when we don't meet the deadlines, what happens is whatever, whatever it is we are trying to do in our career to get ourselves ahead, um, we take a back seat if we don't meet the deadline, meaning that it gets sent right back to you and says, sorry, try again next time. Sometimes that's a whole year. So we do watch these deadlines. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back up here. Um, I want to look at the the, uh, the course readings, okay? And so we come in right here, okay? And so we're doing theories of aging, okay? And um, when we take a look at this, uh, um, this is you know fairly complex biology, but it's put out there for average people to understand it, okay? Alrighty, so so um, some basic concepts to come out of this, okay? So uh, these are aging theories, okay? Um, as you read through them, you, you'll sit there and scratch your head and you go, wait a minute, God, this stuff seems like the, it really overlaps. And it, it does, you know, because there are groups of scientists that pursue this one area of aging research uh, related to the genetics. And then there's a group of scientists that pursue this one area of aging research that's related to oxidation and free radicals and on and on and on. And then you start getting overlap. OK, so we have a big, uh, significant group at USC that looks at, at diet. Um, uh, this is Walter Longo and Sean Curran, okay? Um, so, so the basics, they talk uh, early on about um, right here, calorie restriction, okay? So uh, this is, you know, fancy talk, okay? For, you know, hey, you know what? You gotta have uh, um, a smart and moderate diet, okay? Uh, when we overeat, okay, we cause, and, and this goes overlaps to something else, causes a release of hormones that say, hey, look at all this food, and it, it triggers growth, okay? Growth that can put you at risk for cancer. This is that IGF-1 molecule that's talked about later on, okay? Um, insulin gets released, okay? So um, these are all interrelated by how much food you're taking in, okay? Um, different types of food cause different types of hormones to be released and put you at risk for different types of diseases, okay? so by restricting your diet, by having a moderate, sensible diet, 
you're going to reduce your risk for disease and it is directly related to molecular me mechanisms that happen in the cell and these these same mechanisms are pirated in diseases like diabetes okay like heart disease and especially in cancer okay and that's why you don't want to overeat so you'll, you'll hear god you know an excessive diet and obesity one of the biggest risk factors for cancer okay and that's the second chapter um, that we'll be looking at this week all right so that's just kind of a a quick overview of this whole diet thing and you see I tapped into a bunch of different things so I talk, talked about IGF-1 and I talked about um, uh, um, uh, insulin and uh, so they talk about certain things like antagonistic pleiotropy, pleiotropy that means things that are good for you now like lots and lots of growth so you eat like a freaking hound because you're growing to become the best most finest reproducer known to mankind okay that's all fine and good, um, but evolution really had it designed so that we would, all of you, should probably have three or four kids by now, okay? So we're fertile in our mid-teens, okay? So by age 30, you should have five or six kids. So that way, when you die at 35, you've already passed on your genome and all is good, okay? So all the genes are driven for this, okay? To keep you going, all right? Um, growth genes. This IGF-1 concept that we were talking about, grow, 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 okay? But that grow, 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 grow signal also causes plaques in the arteries and it causes big, giant tumors to form in cancer. So this is kind of a, a grow versus death, okay? This antagonistic pleiotropy means what's good for you now to be reproductive is crappy for you later on in life, okay? Um, another example of that is um, the way your immune system um, uh, attacks um, foreign invaders and cancer. It's called inflammation. So this inflammatory process is all about keeping you from dying from some bacterial or viral infection. It's all good, but chronic inflammation over the lifetime is a risk for um, diabetes, atherosclerosis that causes heart disease, strokes, kidney disease, okay? Um, inflammation is a risk for Parkinson's, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and Alzheimer's disease, on and on and on. Inflammation is a risk for cancer. There's one form of breast cancer cancer called inflammatory breast cancer. Okay, so these are all different examples, okay? Now, when we get into uh, uh, the, the actual uh, molecular mechanism, they talk about mitochondria, okay? And uh, again, this is almost antagonistic pleiotropy unto itself, okay? We need to have this guy. This mitochondria is about giving us as much fuel as possible, and we evolved to consume oxygen and glucose. It's just like your, your car where you suck in the oxygen to the carburetor and you combine it with the gasoline and boom, energy, okay? Same thing's happening in your cell. And just like your car is not 100% efficient, this mitochondria is not 100% efficient either. And it bleeds off these free radicals. It's just one source of many. These free radicals, okay, cause damage to molecules. And this is where we get this kind of um, problem in terms of maintaining um, uh, the, the proper blueprint inside our DNA. It gets damaged. Here's an example of a mitochondrial uh, free radical damage. It's called a mutation in your genome that causes cancer, okay? Um, uh, free radicals also cause uh, the, um, the, uh, the, this is the oxidative free radical uh, uh, hypothesis I'm talking about. They also cause um, um, uh, molecules, proteins that abnormally glob together and you get Alzheimer's and atherosclerosis and things like that. So they're all interrelated and that's kind of what I wanted you to figure out on this. Okay. All right. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. Uh, we look at uh, at the very end, it says replicative senescence. Ah, oh, why, why do we have to use this kind of terminology? All that means is as you get older, your cell division gets all screwed up, okay? Replicative is cell division, senescence is getting older, okay? All right, so it's why my skin is all wrinkled and why my, I, my wound healing sucks now that I get older, okay, because I can't I have um, uh, adequate replication. My immune system is really, really slow to replicate and fight uh, 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 vaccination, I mean, uh, um, 
virus and, and, and bacterial infections. That's why old people need to get vaccinated for the flu. Okay. Um, so, so my ability to produce new cells is messed up. And then per our discussion, my ability to produce new sperm is all messed up. Okay. Because that is all about cell division too. So the sperm are old. They get mutated. They don't, I don't make as many. Blah, 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 blah. And guess what? It's my fault in some ways that we have this problem in terms of um, uh, fertility. Okay? The female fertility, you guys are born with, God, ungodly amounts of eggs. You're born with somewhere close to 200,000 eggs in your ovaries. And then they slowly disappear. Boop, 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 boop. And they, by, the, by the time they're gone, guess what? Then you have menopause. And those ones that have hung in there towards the end, uh, they've been exposed to a lot of free radicals and stuff, and so there's a good chance there's going to be mutations in there. Okay? All righty. So that's the basics of all that. Okay. So um, we then uh, can go on to this, this second, discuss, uh, second reading, and that is um, look at cancer. Okay? And so what we have done is we have... Uh, um, we, we have the actual um, website right here, all right, that you can go to to get the statistics information. So I can click on this, okay? Um, it, it does change, okay? Um, but the, the, the information is in here, and I welcome you to go in here, okay? And find out the information for the quiz, okay? Um, we also have provided um, um, uh, the... Uh, charts that the information uh, comes from okay and this is right in here okay so you can scroll through this and and um, and, uh, and and get a feeling for um, uh, the uh, answers to the questions there okay all right uh, okay the biology of aging part is right here okay same thing here you click on this and it talks about all the different things um, that cause cancer okay the big uh, component is you have oncogenes. These are growth genes, like the IGF-1, grow, 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 okay? Um, so they're the kind of the drivers of cancer, all right? And, um, and then we have the other types of, of, of uh, genes. They're called tumor suppressor genes. So those are all the different types of cancers here, okay? Um, and the P53 molecule that they talked about in the earlier chapter is a tumor suppressor gene. So uh, interestingly enough, um, if you have a really active P53, uh, what it does is it limits cancer, okay? It increases the amount of cell death, so you don't have tumors growing, uh, but that's a problem in your brain. And so people with that have Alzheimer's disease tend to have low levels of cancer. People that have really good cognitive abilities and don't get Alzheimer's tend to have higher levels of cancer. So it's a bizarre take on that. Um, this is a... Um, a difficult topic for many cancer, okay, uh, and we are all touched by it. Uh, one in, uh, get my statistics right here, I think it's one in two males will get cancer in their lifetimes and one in three females will get cancer in their lifetime. So, I mean, that's pretty significant odds. Uh, unfortunately, my wife is in a clinical trial, Julia, for her leukemia right now. It's, uh, it's kicking her ass. There's no free lunch on any of this stuff, okay. Uh, when you people that do clinical trials are heroes because they're taking drugs where um, they don't really know what the outcome is going to be. Sometimes the drugs can kill you, um, but you don't have much choice when it comes to cancer. So uh, do read up on this, and 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 you'll um, um, it'll be personal for some of you, and I understand that. Okay. All right. Um, well, last, don't forget that we have right here the critical thinking assignment. Okay, that is due. Please do follow the assignments, the, uh, the directions. These, this is the rubric, okay? Um, we want graphs, okay? Um, we, we, for example, you go right here, okay? And we're going to click on this, okay? And it's going to take me to this part of the World Data Bank. And you're going to select um, uh, multiple countries, okay? So uh, if we uh, go back here, okay, um, we see what the directions say, okay? We're looking at fertility rate, rate life expectancy, population growth, okay? All right. Um, we want to look at the U.S., okay? And then you're also going to look at three other countries, 
okay? Three countries and the U.S., okay? And you can put each of these on your graph, okay? So there's the world, and then you can just come down here and select, we're looking at fertility, so I can select um, uh, Aruba, okay? And there it is, okay? I can select um, uh, United States, okay? And there it is, okay? Now I got two. I can select uh, Argentina, okay? Uh, so that's two plus the U.S. And I can select um, Armenia, all right? So now I've selected all these uh, different countries, okay? And what I want you to do is look at the history. So from 1960 to 2010, and and ask yourself what were the um, sociological implications? Okay, what why do does the United States have this kind of fertility rate right here? Okay, all right. So we see we can look at it right here during these different time zones. And Argentina, why is it way up here? Okay. So that's what you basically do, okay? Um, you uh, can just do a screenshot, okay? And process it into a grant. However you make the graphs, I, I don't care. You gotta put the graphs in your report. It's only three pages long, okay? So, um, so don't freak out about that. All righty, that's how it's done. Okay, um, like I said, we get over here and we go into the discussion, okay? And uh, this piggybacks on uh, what I was just talking about in terms of the theories of aging. You tell me what you think is uh, the best theory. Go into this right here and learn about your fertility, okay? Um, especially, um, you know, if you have any interest in having children. You know, if you're a woman, you know, you're going to be driving towards your career. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, you know, you go, you go into this website and you start looking at reproductive aging, okay? <sighs> okay, so... Um, I just got my bachelor's degree, okay, um, I'm going to get my master's degree, now I'm going to get my job in, in order, okay, I'm ready to have kids, and lo and behold, boom, look what's happened to your fertility, okay, all right, um, so that being said, okay, you, um, you then will then uh, be able to learn about, um, uh, by going down here, so I'm going to click back up here, all right, Sorry, we'll go get rid of this, okay? And you can learn about these different treatments, okay? All righty, so that's how that works. Okay, all right, guys. So um, uh, I know this is a lot of work, okay? But you're, you're going to be ripping through this class, and you'll be so stoked, so glad. When you're done, a lot of you, this is your last class, and then you can officially say I'm graduated. So, um, so let's, let's do it and, and do a good job. Please watch these video videos because someday some of you are going to have to have this done. All right. All right. Control shift F. We'll see you guys later.